It's a swear word. Do you think I'm too old to get a tattoo? What on earth is Bitcoin? Why is my hair so annoying? How will I tell my kids I haven't got long to live? Some questions are harder than others. If you or a loved one are dealing with end of life or bereavement, Marie Curie are here to help. Okay, hi there. We're with uh, Catherine uh, just now, and Catherine is a Marie Curie care nurse. She works uh, for the can for the charity Marie Curie, uh, which is involved in uh, treating and looking after patients who have terminal illness or really end of life care. We've been talking a lot, Catherine, in our classes about euthanasia as part of the National 5 course. Uh, and so we just thought it'd be great to speak to you. Obviously, you're someone who has a lot of kind of experience of kind of caring for people in that phase of that last phase of life. Um, and just really get a bit of an insight into, into your work uh, and the topic and the, the kind of moral issues surrounding euthanasia. Uh, and also really just want to find out a little bit about your Christian faith as well, because uh, obviously uh, you are a Christian that, that, that changes the way you look at life and changes the way I imagine you look at your, your work and your position. Uh, so great to have you with us, Catherine. Um, might have just start by asking Catherine a bit about Marie Curie. Um, so I guess the, the kind of first question would be, um, what, what is a Marie Curie care nurse? What, what, kind of, what do they do? What, what makes up the job of uh, being a Marie Curie care nurse? Um, hello, everyone. Um, Marie Curie is a charity. It's one of the leading charities that deal with end of life care um, and supporting people uh, to die well, I guess. Uh, last year, we cared for over 40,000 people in the UK who were dying um, and who were living with a terminal illness. So Marie Curie, we have nine hospices across the UK. Um, where people might come into the hospice setting for symptom control um, or they might come in for end-of-life care um, or they might be supported by a community nurse. Um, I am currently a community nurse for Marie Curie and we go and visit people at home, uh, support them and their families as they deal and live with a terminal illness. So that's an illness that's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse and it is going to... Um, end their life. Um, so we don't just look after people who are dying with cancer. Uh, we deal and care uh, for people that have all sorts of life limiting illnesses. So motor neuron disease, heart failure, cancer, basically anything that someone can die of, we support and care for people um, to yeah, be well looked after and to die well and support their families as well. So it's a really important job um, and it's an amazing job and a very huge privileged job. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of Marie Curie and who I work for. Brilliant, thank you, Catherine. And I guess um, we've, we've, seen, we've seen some of those illnesses you, you talked about kind of in the effects they have on, on people, motor neuron disease and, uh, and others. Um, I guess kind of, with that in mind, you know, imagine it is quite a challenging job at times with obviously with the topic, with the situation you face. And um, what, what is, if you don't mind me asking, what's, what's the hardest part of your job that you find kind of week by week? Um, I guess it is being with people and their pain and suffering. That's not easy. Um, although it's a privilege to be alongside people who are dealing with such difficult situations but it's definitely emotionally hard um, partly just because we're all humans and I care about the people that I care for I care about their families and it's hard to see them struggling but at the same time a blessing and a privilege to know that I can help them in their difficulty even in a small way by whether that's just listening to what they're worried about by offering reassurance or by um helping alleviate some symptoms that they might be struggling with, any anxieties that they might have about what what dying is like and what to expect. So it's it's not easy, but actually it's important that we get this right for everyone. And so although my job is hard, it's so important to be able to care for people well who are dying. Mm, absolutely. And I guess the second question, maybe you've kind of answered already, but what, 
but what is the most rewarding part of your job in, in that sense? You know, what is it, what are the things you look back on and you just think you, you're delighted to be able to do, to be part of? What do you get up for every morning? Um, so I've said it's a huge privilege to um, care for people. It's a huge privilege to get to know people uh, when people are dying, when they have a terminal illness, they are very vulnerable, uh, they can be very open. Um, and it's just a real honour to, to be able to get to know people in that real in-depth way, um, to be part of their lives, even if that's just for a short time, um, to get to know some incredible people who deal with some really difficult stuff and manage that so well. We help people hugely improve their symptoms. Uh, people can be in very um, difficult situations. They can be struggling with pain, with sickness, with breathlessness. And our job is to help manage those symptoms through advising on different medicines. And we can really improve somebody's quality of life so that they can actually then enjoy spending the time that they have left with their family, enjoying precious moments. We provide care that allows family to be family and not be carers. We help advise on um, financial worries. We help advise on uh, where um, it would be best for somebody to be cared for when they're you know, very much at the very last stages of their life and offer support and guidance and reassurance of how that can be made as how that can be as smooth as possible in that process. So, and we get lots of feedback of how thankful people are that mm. we've been involved in their life um, or a family member that tells us after their loved one has died that they're so thankful for the support that they received from our, our team, our services, from the palliative care nurses that they, they've met. Um, so we we do a, a, a great work um, mm. to keep and I think that is appreciated hugely because dying is scary mm -hmm. and so to have somebody walk alongside you in that is really important yeah I'm sure it is of really great benefit and, and, and a real um, privilege for the families to have someone come in and support them in those in those particularly hard times um, I guess Catherine if you can kind of cast your mind back to when you first became a nurse you know did you imagine kind of getting into this kind of work you know what, what was it do you think that drove you towards towards being a nurse and providing this kind of care for people? So my mum's a nurse and she was a huge um, influence and inspiration to me about wanting to be a nurse. Initially, I did actually think I, I wanted to be a midwife, which is quite ironic now that instead of bringing people into the world, I'm thinking about uh, caring for people at end of life. Um, I also have personal experience of family members who have struggled with maybe a terminal illness and have been influenced by some really special people who made those family members lives and end of life really um I guess who helped um, care for them and I thought actually I am so passionate about people being cared for well at end of life mm -hmm. And I know that I can make a difference in that and care for people spiritually, psychologically, physically. And I know that I can do that well. Therefore, I am going to do that so I can make a difference to people's lives. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, Catherine. Um, kind of moving on to, I guess, the topic of euthanasia in particular. Um, like we've looked a lot at kind of euthanasia and the kind of current situation in the UK um, that is in terms of active euthanasia, voluntary euthanasia it is illegal. Um, it is legal in some countries around around Europe. Uh, and we've looked at palliative care and obviously the great work uh, that goes on in by different, loads of different care organisations in the UK. Um, I guess it's a very, a very um, vague question in some ways, but do you think, I mean, in the, your experience you've had, do you think palliative care is a is a better option? Is an option really we should back as much as possible for someone who's dying rather than euthanasia? And um, what are your views on that? So personally, as a palliative care nurse, I think palliative care is the right thing. Uh, I personally don't agree with the idea of euthanasia. Um, I think there are so many risks to 
people feeling obliged to um, accept euthanasia or assisted suicide. I see how patients struggle to allow their family to care for them in mm. some ways, but actually the benefit that families have when they can care for their loved one and do care for their loved one and how privileged it is for them to care for their loved one. And I think removing that, you know, could have such detrimental effects. I also think that people, if you are terminally ill, there is good support out there. There is amazing GPs. There are amazing district nurses. There are amazing palliative care nurses and people out there to care for people and ensure that people are cured for a well end of life. And we shouldn't hasten somebody's death or makes anyone feel like their death should be hastened because they feel or worry that they are a burden. Mm -hmm. We can improve symptoms. We can offer the emotional support that is needed if we're allowed to. And, and if, you know, actually what we need is more support for palliative care, more funding for palliative care, so to speak. So everyone can have the good death that a palliative care nurse and a palliative care team, whether that's GPs or district nurses or us can provide. Mm -hmm. That's what's important. And I think, and is the support not there as much as you'd like to see it, Catherine? In, in terms of the funding, in terms of um, maybe public support, sometimes for the work of palliative care charities. Yeah, I mean, th there's always scope for more. There's nine hospices across the UK for Marie Curie. There's lots of other hospices, but there are a lot of people dying, and a lot of people that need support, and we have constant. Um, requirements in our service to see more and more people and you know if there was more of us that would that would be of huge benefit to so many people and I think we know that we can provide such special moments for for patients for people and their families by providing good palliative care by sorting out all the stuff that's a burden to them to allow them to have those special times with families. If you, if euthanasia and you actively hasten someone's death, the, the huge risk of missing out on special moments for that person and their family is, is too scary, I think, personally. But that's my personal opinion. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Catherine. Uh, moving on a little bit more to I guess something more personal to you, your your own Christian faith in particular obviously your Christian faith has, has massively shaped your life and your perspective on, on all matters of life but but maybe particularly uh, your view on, on illness and death how could you share with us how, how has your Christian faith maybe shaped that perspective that view on some of these issues that we've been talking about yeah so being a Christian um, is a huge source of comfort for me um, in my in my work, um, I also believe that life is so valuable. Um, as a Christian, um, first and foremost, I believe that God created everything. He created each one of us. He sees each one of us as valuable and important, no matter if at times we don't feel valuable or if we are struggling with things. God has made us in his image and he cares about us and he made us and I guess to, to, to end that personally I feel it's not actually our right um, I believe that God created us and only he has the authority to, to end life um, if I made a cake in my house and my husband came downstairs and destroyed that cake and put it in the bin, that would upset me, that would hurt me. And actually I made that cake and only I have the right to destroy it. <laughs> Therefore I believe that, you know, God gives life and he is the only one that has the right to take that away. And I would just worry hugely for the burden that, that health professionals would face and have to deal with if they were the ones 
to end someone's life prematurely. Yeah, no, of course. Thank you, Catherine. I guess one last question, maybe, you know, how how do you as a Christian kind of respond to, to death when you see it? Um, do you find meaning and purpose in our, in deaths? Is there is there hope in death even? Um, so death is difficult to deal with, whether you're a Christian or of any religion or of no religion at all. We all struggle with the concept of someone dying. We all struggle with loss after someone has died. Um, the, the comfort I have is that as a Christian, I believe that if you are a Christian and if you believe in God and if you trust in him, he offers a hope that is greater than uh, the difficulties of le- this life. So as a Christian, I believe if you are a Christian, that after this life is over and after you die, whenever that is, whether you're young or old, if you have a relationship with God, that you get to spend eternity with God in heaven. And so for me, the Bible talks about heaven being a place where God is and a perfect place where there's no more suffering, there's no more death, there's no loss, there's no grief. It's the most wonderful place, which is hard to get our heads around. But actually, the hope that we can have in in the next life, if we're a Christian, is so incredible because this life is difficult. This life is full of loss and sorrow and sadness and, and grief and suffering. But if we have a hope that there's something better and that hope is available if we put our trust in God, then... That is such a comfort and it's such a comfort for, um, you know, those around you as well, that although you have died in this life, you go on to live eternally um, in a much better place. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Catherine. That's really, really helpful for us to understand, I guess, both uh, the work of palliative care nurses in the UK and, and the views of a, of a Christian in, in maybe separately um just one last question i guess you know if you were to tell our classes how might we support the work of marie curie if if is there any way in particular that uh, you tend to encourage people to support that work um yeah so tell people about um marie curie um look out for fundraising events um remember that providing this really important palliative care is all based on on funding, on people fundraising. You know, we don't get um, that much money from the government, so it relies on people being generous. So being aware of what we do, um, being involved in fundraising if you're up for it, um, but also, I guess, being aware that if you know anyone that is struggling with a terminal illness or you know of somebody that has somebody in their family that's struggling or that, you know, just be mindful that there is help out there, is support out there. And, and, and if anyone's struggling, if they contact their GP, um, their GP can contact the palliative care team, whether that's a Marie Curie nurse or another, you know, palliative care nurse. And um, remember that there's help out there. And uh, if people are struggling, um, they shouldn't have to do that alone. And we don't want people to have to feel like they have to turn to other means. Um, when there is care out there. So fundraise, great, but actually just talk about us, remember us and know that there's help there for everyone. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Catherine. Mm-hmm. Thank you for taking your time to speak to us. I uh, appreciate you all those answers you gave us. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.